Hey there, welcome to PC Mag Live. I'm Samara Lynn here with Alex Colon and uh, welcome to today's show. We have, as usual, the top trending tech news. We have one of your questions to answer and we also have the one cool thing one of us currently testing to show you. So let's get right to the big stories today. So we just heard that uh, Google bought Songza. Yeah, um, this is pretty, pretty interesting news. Um, Songza is a streaming music service. Um, it, there, it's kind of different from other streaming music services in that it offers music that is based on your mood or earlier this year they teamed up with the Weather Channel and they were offering music based on your local weather. Um, but the thing is it's all picked by actual people. Um, Google's current music service is mostly computer based so this brings sort of a human element to it. Um, I'm assuming we're going to see Google folded into Google Play Music. Uh, maybe it'll appear somehow on YouTube. Um, but basically to me it seems like it's a reaction to Apple's purchase of Beats, um, you know, streaming music or especially curated playlists are right. definitely becoming more important as more people listen to music that way. Right, but nowhere near the ching. Oh, no, no. Yeah. So we don't we don't know the amount. <laughs> right. But I right. was reading online, it definitely seems like it was nowhere more than 40 million, whereas Beats was three, ah, 3 40 billion. million. <laughs> ah, it's jump change. Yeah. Anyway, okay, so thanks, Alice. Our second story is T-Mobile has been accused of some pretty serious charges by the FTC. Yeah, so, um, well, to be clear, T-Mobile itself hasn't been accused of overbilling, it's that T-Mobile is allowing third-party vendors to put their charges onto T-Mobile customers' bills. Um, those kinds of charges are sort of like bogus premium texting apps, or um, I think it was quoted, it was um, celebrity gossip and horoscopes. Basically, people are being charged $9.99 a month for it. Um, T-Mobile is allowing these charges to go through and basically getting something like 30 to 40% um, of the profit off of those charges. Um, a lot of those people who eventually saw the charges going through, they complained to T-Mobile, and something like 40% of them were actually refunded. So the FTC is using that as evidence that T-Mobile is aware that these are bogus charges because they are refunding a number of people. Right. Um, on T-Mobile's part, John Ledger um, has said that, you know, T he completely denies that T-Mobile is, you know, doing any bogus charges. Um, and this was actually, it's been a bigger problem for landline phones. Um, landline operators have, you know, gotten the smackdown for this, but it hasn't really happened over cellular yet. So it's kind of interesting to see what where it's going to go. And there's a specific name to this practice. Oh, um, it is. Oh, I think it's called sorry. cramming. Cramming. Is that, that cram is it. Yeah, it, it just sounds nefarious. <laughs> but yeah, and I mean, we're not sure if uh, the FTC is going after any other uh, carriers. Um, our news director's been on a couple of calls with her sources, and she's saying that the FTC is not talking, but. Something to keep an eye on if uh, any of the other carriers are doing it. Watch out. Yeah, definitely. Okay, now third story is uh, Yo Hodor. Um, yeah, so if you're familiar with the Yo app, which recently came out, there is now a sort of parody spinoff of it called Yo Hodor. Um, and basically, instead of being able to just send Yo to whoever else you are connected on the app with, you can only send the word Hodor. Um, as you may know, Hodor is a popular character on Game of Thrones. Um, and this is just kind of a silly take on that. Um, you can, it, this app has usernames instead of phone numbers like mm -hmm. Yo does, mm -hmm. but other than that, it seems like pretty much the same concept to me. Right. Um, right. You were saying something, there were some copyright issues? Yeah, well, it was kind of interesting. There was an interview with a developer who created the app in like four hours, but uh, he originally had an image of Hodor, and he got kind of freaked out. He's like, you know, I better take this off once the app started getting popular, and he removed that, but he also uses a clip from the show. So he's kind of worried right. about getting sued. So uh, yeah, he's, he's got to be a little bit careful about that. Well, if you are interested, though, the app is free. Um, unfortunately, it is iOS only. Sorry, Android fans. All the best apps, you know, iOS first. <laughs> there you go. So uh, on to our question of the day. Yeah, our reader question to, of the day comes from YouTube. It's from M. Omar Sali. And he asks, I want to change my HDD drive to SSD in my HP Envy. What are the best choices? Now, you know, um, I actually consulted with our laptop analyst, Brian Westover, on this. Um, and you didn't specify which HP Envy model you have because there are a couple of different models that have a couple of different ways of going about it. First, there are a number of HP Envy laptops which have sealed chassis. That means you ain't getting in them, so you can't update. So just forget about that. Now, some of them do already have hybrid drives. That is a hybrid of SATA and SSD. Um, they might be trickier to update. You might want to just look in leveraging that hybridization of getting that SSD performance. If neither of those are applicable to your uh, HP Envy, you can get into the chassis and you're using SATA, 
then by all means, just swap it out like you would, you know, any other sort of component upgrade. You want to make sure that you have the right size for the uh, laptop uh, interior. And also you want to make sure you have the right connector. Uh, there are some SSDs, I believe still with some sort of satellite connectors, but usually they're increasingly coming with PCI connectors to reduce that footprint inside of the casing. Uh, look to Intel and Samsung for some of your SSD choices and uh, let us know how you make out. Okay, so on to our one cool thing of the day, and that is, Alex? Yes, this <laughs> right here is UPI. Uh, it stands for Ubiquitous Computer, and it's essentially like Siri for your home. You plug it into a wall and it lets you control a bunch of different, you can ask it questions like what the weather is. Um, it also lets you control connected devices. There will be eventually support for things like Nest. Right now it works with smart things and that gives you access to um, devices from Honeywell and GE. Um, it's, it's built on Android 4.1 and it uses the SoundCloud API so you could ask it to play you music. Um, it's it's kind of neat. This is only a beta. It's two ninety nine, so it's definitely a little rough around the edges, but it's fun. I mean, we can we can try to see what the weather in New York is like right now. Okay, Ubi. What is the weather like in New York? New York. It is currently partly cloudy. Eighty one Fahrenheit. All right, so Ubi's a little slow on the uptake, but <laughs> it's that, was, that was the correct the search. forecast. That's pretty cool, and I'm, I, we got to look to play with this a little bit before the show. And, and obviously, this is connected to wirelessly to your network, so it is going. I guess it needs an internet connection. Yes. And from the way I see, just uh, just based on like network information, eventually it should be able to control any smart device that has an IP address. So if you have those lights or a smart fridge or, as uh, Alex mentioned, Honeywell connected to the same router as this um, Ubi it will, should eventually, once it, the product evolves, be able to control all those devices. And that's a big problem with the uh, Internet of Things. You have all these connected devices, they all require their own apps, their own sort of interface to use, where everybody just wants this one panel to control all of these devices. So it's a great step in the right direction for Internet of Things, but obviously it's, uh, it's still a little raw. So anyway, we're going into a holiday weekend, so um, enjoy uh, your 4th of July. Have a safe and wonderful holiday, and please join us again on Monday. Have a great day.